If you're sick and tired of having your heart broken by emotionally unavailable people, listen to this. Well, yes, anybody can get sucked into a relationship with someone who's emotionally unavailable, such as a dismissive avoidant or a narcissist. But if you're an anxious attacher, and yes, this includes fearful avoidance, since fearful avoidance have an anxious side, you are far more prone to get into a relationship with a dismissive avoidant, or even worse, a narcissist. Let me explain why. The answer usually starts in childhood. Anxious attachers generally grew up in households where their needs were inconsistently met. Sometimes they were, sometimes they weren't. That creates anxiety. And the most common scenario is when they have a parent that's a narcissist and a parent that's not. And what they witnessed is the non-narcissistic parent walking on eggshells, catering to the narcissist, trying to earn the love and affection and the approval from the narcissist. But the narcissist only inconsistently giving that love and affection, but not just to the other parent, but to the children as well. Narcissistic parents will often heap on the praise and the validation onto a child and then go cold, withdraw it all together, creating that deep inconsistency and the need in the child to earn that love and affection from the narcissist, to prove themselves worthy of that consistent love. And then what commonly happens? The narcissistic parent discards the non-narcissistic parent and often outright abandons the family altogether. And this creates a deep abandonment wound in addition to anxiety. Because now you have a child that's trained to try to cater to an emotionally unavailable person, earn their love, and try to prevent them from running away. And this absolutely has repercussions as an adult. The human mind works in weird ways. Now the anxious attacher as an adult chases after the emotionally unavailable partner. There's a comfort and familiarity. It's what you knew, it's what you grew up with. You witnessed the narcissistic parent gaslighting, manipulating, pulling away. So when it happens to you, it feels familiar. And then you begin the chase and the chase itself can be quite addicting. The inconsistent reinforcement from the emotionally unavailable partner, regardless of what label they are, can be quite addicting. You're on a roller coaster ride. When you're getting that validation and that love from the unavailable partner, it feels great, it comes with a huge dopamine hit. But then when they pull away, it doesn't feel so good, but the highs are so good that you get addicted to that high, that you wanna get back to that high and you ride out the low, which means you ride out the mistreatment, you ride out them pulling away, you ride out them doing things that you really don't like, that really hurt you. Plus, your subconscious brain recognizes their emotional unavailability, usually right from the start. This creates anxiety. But due to your childhood, due to your attachment wounds, you often mistake this anxiety for butterflies, for excitement, for a spark. And not recognizing, it's actually your subconscious brain trying to warn you that this person's not safe. And often when you meet somebody who is emotionally available, that anxiety isn't there. And your brain can mistakenly think that that means this person's boring, when in reality, your subconscious mind is just trying to tell you that this person's safe. Anxious attachers are more susceptible to love bombing, and emotionally unavailable people tend to be love bombers. Narcissists, dismissive avoidance, fearful avoidance that lean dismissive, they can all be love bombers. Now for vastly different reasons, vastly different intent, but love bombers nonetheless. And that affection, that pouring on of the praise and validation, it feels like a drug because of your deep attachment wound of wanting that love, wanting to be wanted, wanting to feel that you are seen and heard. It feels so good. Because of that inconsistent reinforcement as a child, it does create some self-esteem issues, a deep feeling like maybe you're not good enough to get that consistent love, to get the really good affection and validation. But when you're getting it in love bombing, it is just filling you up and you are feeling on cloud nine. But it feels so good that you're not recognizing that this is too much, too soon, too fast. 
this person doesn't even really know you yet, but they're telling you that nobody's ever made them feel the way you do. They're talking about a future together and they've only known you for a couple weeks. So the brain turns a blind eye to all these red flags because the validation, the love bombing feels so good. And by the time that you realize that this person is not as they presented themselves to be, you've already caught feelings. Now you're attached, now you're hooked, and you don't wanna let go of the version that they showed you they could be. So you continue to try to earn that version back, earn that love, earn that validation, prove to this person that you are good enough and hoping that the love bombing version will come back. Often enduring mistreatment, gaslighting, pulling away, cheating, stonewalling, hoping that one day that this person will wake up and that love bombing version will come back, but they never do, at least not for any significant period of time because they're showing you who they are, whether you want to believe it or not. Okay, so you recognize that this has been your pattern. What you gonna do about it? How do you stop it? Well, first, the first step is recognizing it. Understanding this is your pattern. That's actually really important. But the next step is to set firm boundaries. Boundaries are your limits of what you want, don't want, what you need, don't need, what you tolerate, not tolerate, what you expect. And when you have a partner that's starting to exhibit unhealthy behaviors, hold firm to those boundaries including walking away from the relationship if needed, if your needs are not being met, and if you are being treated in a way that doesn't work for you. Instead of trying to earn the approval from this person and try to convince them to treat you better, respecting your own self-worth can mean taking a step away and leaving all together. Your actions, holding boundaries, go a long way towards reprogramming your emotional mind. Because when you hold boundaries, when you set those limits, you're sending yourself the subconscious message that your needs matter, your feelings matter, and that you matter. You're also telling yourself that you can rely on yourself to take care of yourself, to take care of your needs, even when it's tough. Outside of relationships, pour in energy into things that are good for you, whether it's hobbies, your career, friendships, family relationships. Put that energy into yourself because it sends a positive message that you do have value, that you are worth it, that you have your own back and you can rely on yourself to do things that are good for you. Seek therapy, work towards healing those old attachment wounds. But more than anything, your boundaries are the number one thing that will set you free. Because emotionally unavailable people especially narcissistic people, they cannot maintain relationships with people that have and hold boundaries. Because these people approach a relationship with a what's in it for me attitude. What do I get? Your boundaries being your limits, being your needs, your expectations, are an inconvenience, an obstacle to the narcissistic person and to an unhealthy person in general. So your boundaries, if you hold them firm, you will never be in a long-term relationship with a person that is unhealthy, toxic, or emotionally unavailable. They will set you free, your boundaries.